Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with RSU TV at Rogers State University in Oklahoma. Today, we are chatting with Ken Busby, Executive Director and CEO of the Route 66 Alliance. Ken has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. And thank you, Ken, for joining us today. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me. So Route 66, Los Angeles to Chicago. Correct. And then all of the states in between, all the communities in between, Talk about the Alliance. Well, the Alliance is a, an exciting nonprofit organization that is really dedicated to promoting, fostering not, not only the history of Route 66, but then really uh, projecting it to the future and working with those eight states, as you mentioned, through which it crosses all 2,448 miles. So getting all the eight state associations to work together and how do we promote and how then do we really promote the road to both national and international audiences. And also, we want to make sure that those communities thrive and they're connected together through that route. I mean, this, this, is, a, this is a historic treasure, and we Absolutely. have to make sure that it doesn't become a flyover. <laughs> uh, it, people really need to experience Route 66 and the different states. Absolutely, because each state has its own flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, each state has interesting history uh, about the route. Um, and I think even even more important, as you mentioned, uh, not being flyover uh, in in Middle America, we do risk that a lot. So you have great starting points of Chicago and and Los Angeles, um, Santa Monica to be precise. Uh, but then there's really cool things all along the way, and each state has something to offer you. So you need to explore each of those as you're as you're experiencing the route, and you'll find something fascinating. The best thing probably about the route, because uh, I call it the color of the route, is the people. And the stories that you'll hear, especially in the smaller communities as you go, but the big cities too, uh, there's just a lot of great stories to tell. And that's what makes the Route 66 so cool. And we're approaching the 100th anniversary yes. of the Route yes. within this next decade. Talk about how the Route started okay. and, and its early history and, and then all the way through into the First World War, and then, of course, the Eisenhower administration's creation of the interstate highway right. uh, system. Well, it started uh, really about 1926. I mean, that's that's when it really got started. Uh, it was it was talked about beginning about in 24. They were really getting it mapped out 25, and it starts in 26, and it takes about another 11 years to get it fully uh, paved. And in there, you have the Great Depression uh, right. in in 29, and mm -hmm. that that continued until the start of the, uh, the the Second World War. Exactly. And then the Second World War intervened. So within that time. We're doing some pretty big, big things. Big things, and to your point too, with the depression, you have then westward expansion, and you have people trying to find hope out of the Dust Bowl and out of the depression, and so forth. and so they're going west, and they take Route 66. It was the migrant road, and then, as you mentioned, with World War II, you have movement of troops and movement of equipment, and so forth. So this road was the very heart and soul of America, and I think that's why it has this interest and uh, wonder for people today, is because it was so critically important to to the very essence of who we are as America. So in its early days, it was the initial thoroughfare for automobiles mm -hmm. and for goods and services to move back and forth. Absolutely. And then through the, through the Second World War, it's completed and it, it starts to have effects on communities. Communities start to grow up. And then you have that message getting across that we need an interstate highway right. system. And right. Eisenhower came in and that administration starts to build that. How did, how did that affect the route? Well, it, it, it affected it in not, in not a, a good way for the small town communities. Um, it was, uh, we, we had more goods and services, more people, therefore the interstate highway system was really going to uh, move people quicker and more eff effectively and more efficiently. And so what that, what that literally did is bypassed all of these smaller communities uh, who had relied on the road and that traffic to fund all of those small businesses. There was a push in 1952, uh, it was branded, uh, Route 66 was branded as the Will Rogers Highway. And the idea behind that was again, that iconic figure to to try to build more interest in it and so forth. That was simply not enough though. But So by the 70s, all of Route 66 is bypassed. It's, it has become, and by 1984, uh, it's uh, 85 actually, it's decommissioned. And so now it's referred to lovingly as uh, historic Route 66 because by that point, every inch of it is, has been bypassed literally by the interstate system. Very much so. What happened, what's happened since the 80s? So since the 80s, uh, thanks to some federal programs uh, with um, U.S. Highway Department and so forth, we've, we've seen uh, some preservation initiatives that have been done to, to, to try to uh, 
improve and enhance some of those aspects of Route 66, some of the iconic places along the route. And so uh, we, we've had two good opportunities with that. The last one, uh, Corridor Preservation Program, uh, sunsets, this is sunsetting right now, and so forth. And so right now, we're really hoping that Congress will uh, uh, authorize uh, uh, and make it a, a national historic trail. That is the push that we're all doing right now in the Road Ahead Partnership that I work with and some others that are really trying to get that initiative done because that will open additional federal funding capabilities that we can then use to re help revitalize these communities all along the route because uh, they really need it. They need this shot of infusion of, of funding and so forth. If they're really gonna be successful, these communities really can turn over and those local communities are the identity of that part of their state, whatever state they're in. And so it's critically important. Uh, what are the challenges that you faced in trying to pull together this group of people so that each of the different communities are working together for a complementary experience, a continuous experience that unfolds depending on whether one is going from the, from the uh, southwest to mm -hmm. the northeast right. or, or back again. Right. It is difficult because uh, each state and in each community has different levels of sophistication and awareness and, and even commitment to, to doing something like this. And funding. This. And funding, funding, funding is always the issue, and it is for everybody. And and so it's one of those things where where you're trying to um, uh, show the importance of what you're doing, and to, as you mentioned earlier, to economic development. So we're we're trying to give rationales and reasons uh, for people so that the local city councils and the local mayors and the local chambers and so forth all see the value of this and can look at this truly from an economic development, cultural tourism standpoint. That is what we pitch and promote because it works and it's true. I mean, that is what people are doing. And fascinatingly enough, I always, I always get or often get asked this question, is it, well, isn't this for an aging population, Ken? Won't people just get tired of it? No, actually we're seeing millennials and so forth even start talking about two, three, four day trips kinds of things, they want those authentic experiences. So we're trying to help show them, well, if you go to Baxter Springs, Springs Kansas, and then work your way into to Oklahoma, and you see Claremore with the blue whale, and you do, here's, here's a fun experience that you can have, and like, well, this is cool, this is different, and it's unlike anything else they've experienced. And it's those, again, authentic, unique experiences that we can help create and promote that's working. And so we're seeing more and more communities uh, start really trying to build up their storefronts and, and, and use Route 66 as a reason to revitalize themselves because then they're seeing increased traffic. Now, a lot of what you do is about communication. You mm -hmm. have uh, this, this brochure and you also mm -hmm. have a website. How do you help through communication, through connecting different people with different interests mm -hmm. and so on? How do you create this sort of uh, experience that, that somebody can be primed for and understand before they actually take the journey. Right, good question. And and, and most of it uh, is because uh, because of technology. With, with technology, we can do things like apps and websites and so forth so that you can map out your route ahead of time. How many days do you have? Here's the things that you'll find along the way. Here's uh, photos, uh, we do a lot of photo sharing where people say, well, these are the experiences I just recently had. You'll wanna do this too. Um, uh, so we're, we're, we're doing more and more things like that using technology. Uh, we are developing an app, but we also work with a couple of other or organizations that already have apps. Um, and uh, one actually is based in uh, in in the Netherlands, um, who are fascinated by Route 66, and so they're helping you know create an app in that regard because they love what we're doing over here. So uh, we're we're trying so we're trying not to duplicate and we're trying not to reinvent the wheel. We're we're looking at and always having communication with folks to see okay who's doing what, who's got the coolest app now, who's got the best photo sharing, who's doing this, and how do we then promote what they're doing through social media. And w what is also interesting is if you take a look at people who do not live in this country, mm -hmm. uh, they are becoming less and less interested in just visiting the, the large coastal cities. That's correct. Uh, because uh, when you, we've gotten to the point in the world where you go to one of the large cities, you're going to see very much the same products. Right. You're going to be able to eat the same type of food. The hotels are, are large and mm -hmm. very similar. Mm -hmm. That is not the heart of America. No. And no. people want to feel the heart of America. Absolutely. This is where you can get the heart of America. Exactly. This is America before it became generic. Right. Right, right, right. Th that's what this is all about. And and we are hearing from more and more people that want to have those experiences, want to see things that aren't generic, want to want to see things that are not what they can find in their in their own backyard. And and that's what's cool because there are just more and more stories to tell. 
Now, your, your opening in uh, 2020, uh, a new facility. Talk about that. Well, we're, we're, we're a little behind, only because uh, we've actually um, got off on some other projects about this whole communication component and, and marketing and so forth. So we're actually going to be breaking ground in 2020, opening in 2022, which is fine for us because in the meantime, we've laid all this additional groundwork. But why everyone's so excited about this, especially our, our uh, Tulsa Regional Chamber and so forth, is because uh, we are not we're not competing with anybody else. We're not a collecting institution. We're not a museum. We're not doing that. We are here to get people to make sure through apps and so on, we get them to the cool things they need to experience and we will send them to like the official uh, State Route 66 Museum in Clinton, Oklahoma. Okay, drive two hours this way. You will be there. Here's what you're gonna find, but we wanna make sure you get there and don't miss it. That kind of thing. So that's what this center is going to do. So it's in part a, a, an, an orientation. Correct. It's a knowledge exchange. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a guide. Yep. It's a place where people can drop a little cash uh, sure. and, and go to a restaurant and, yeah. and see a drive-in movie and, right. and have that experience. And, and it is a way to bring knowledge of Oklahoma to visitors to the United States. Exactly. And as you know, in the state of Oklahoma, we have 39 federally recognized tribes of, of the Native American population. We, our facility will be on actual creek land, original creek land. And so we're working very closely with all of our tribal partners to, to help tell their stories, to make sure that people go and visit their centers as well so that people can, can learn about that such important part of, of, of our history and American history. And so, and you have uh, museums like the, the Gilcrease, which tells that story. And so, so we, please explore those, please come find out and learn. By getting people going. to pause, you're, yes. you're creating opportunities for other institutions. Mm -hmm. And also, very often, economic development starts with knowledge that somebody acquires as a tourist. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're driving through, they see, they, they come again with their families, then they bring their business partners. And mm -hmm. over time, that kind of exposure creates familiarity, yep. creates discussions, creates opportunity, mm -hmm. and opportunity leads to economic development. Absolutely, and the critical part of that though is that's why we want all of these communities and why there's this real push to build everyone up because we want people to have those positive experiences because they want, we want them relating positive experiences. They have not negative like, I was here but there was nothing to see or do. That will, that will kill tourism. And so you want people to be going to these communities and say, wow, you won't believe what I saw, what my family saw, what we, what we experienced. And so that's, that's why we're trying to really help uh, lift up and bring up all of those communities so that Wherever you go on the road is, is positive experiences that you can then communicate and let people know about what you've experienced. So, such an important part of American heritage, such an important part of our history, a way mm -hmm. to bind the nation together. Ken Busby, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Route 66 Alliance, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank, thank you, Mark. I've enjoyed it.